Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have studied the structural aspects of monosaccharides. In this video, we are going to study about properties and derivatives of monosaccharides. What are the properties of carbohydrates due to anomeric carbon atom? What is anomeric carbon atom? It is the carbon atom number 1 in case of aldosis and carbon atom number 2 that is second carbon atom in case of ketosis. And this anomeric carbon atom, the orientation of hydroxyl group below or above the plane of ring defines the alpha and beta anomers. And the first property due to anomeric carbon atom is muta rotation. Muta rotation is the change in the specific optical rotation representing interconversion of alpha and beta forms of D-glucose to an equilibrium mixture. So when a fresh solution of D-glucose is prepared, its specific rotation of polarized light is plus 112.2 degrees. But after 12 to 18 hours, it changes to plus 52.7 degrees. And this change in rotation with time is called as muta rotation. Now why this muta rotation occurs? So this muta rotation occurs because D-glucose has two anomers. This is alpha anomer and this is beta anomers. And these anomers are produced by spatial configuration with reference to first carbon atom in glucose. And alpha D-glucose has a specific rotation of plus 112 degree and beta D-glucose has specific rotation of around 19 degree or 18.7 degree. So both undergo muta rotation at an equilibrium and at the equilibrium one third molecules are of alpha type that is 36 percent and two third are of beta type that is 63 percent and so that the specific rotation at the equilibrium is plus 52.7. This is called as muta rotation. And this is the important property of carbohydrate due to anomeric carbon atom. The second property of carbohydrates due to anomeric carbon atom is called as tautomerization or enolization. What is this enolization? In the alkaline medium, glucose produces fructose and mannose through the intermediate form that is called as 1,2-endiols. So in this 1,2-endiol, there is shift of hydrogen from one carbon atom to other carbon atom and this intermediate form is a strong reducing agent and the reducing properties of carbohydrates is due to this 1,2 endiols. So the glucose in the alkaline medium forms endiols and there is reduction of cupric ions to cuprous ions and there is formation of cupric oxide precipitate and this is the principle behind Benedict test. It is the Semi-quantitative test used to detect the presence of reducing sugar in urine. And the various substances which produce positive Benedict test are glucose, fructose, lactose, galactose, pentose, except sucrose. Sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. The third property of carbohydrates due to anomeric carbon atom is osazone formation with phenylhydrazine. All reducing sugars will form osazones with excess of phenylhydrazine in acidic medium at 100 degrees centigrade. And the osazones can serve to distinguish reducing sugars to two different shapes of crystals. For example, glucose, fructose, they form needle shaped crystals. The maltose form sunflower shaped crystals and lactose form powder puff crystals. So glucose, fructose and mannose, they form this needle shaped uh, crystals. Uh, why this glucose, fructose and mannose form similar uh, crystals? Because osazone formation involves only first and second carbon atoms. And you can see in the structure, glucose, fructose and mannose, they differ from each other only with respect to first and second carbon. And as First and second carbons are involved in the osazone formation. The difference is masked. And that's why the osazone crystals of glucose, fructose and mannose are identical. What are the different derivatives of monosaccharides? There are various derivatives like sugar acids, sugar alcohols, amino sugars, deoxy sugars, glycosides, etc. Monosaccharides undergo various reactions to form the derivatives. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल एसिड फॉर्मेशन अल्कोहल फॉर्मेशन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अमाइनो शुगर्स ईस्टर फॉर्मेशन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ डीऑक्सी शुगर्स एंड ग्लाइकोसाइड फॉर्मेशन द फर्स्ट वन इज एसिड फॉर्मेशन एंड दिस एसिड फॉर्मेशन ऑकर्स बाय ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ अल्डीहाइड कार्बन हाइड्रोक्सिल कार्बन और बोथ एंड थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ शुगर एसिड्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द रिएक्शन कंडीशन एंड दे आर अल्डोनिक एसिड अल्डारिक एसिड एंड यूरोनिक एसिड द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अल्डोनिक एसिड इज ग्लूकोनिक एसिड एंड दिस ग्लूकोनिक एसिड इज फॉर्म फ्रॉम ग्लूकोज बाय द रिएक्शन कैटेलाइज बाय ग्लूकोज ऑक्सीडेज एंड दिस ग्लूकोज ऑक्सीडेज मेथड इज यूज फॉर डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ ब्लड ग्लूकोज द अल्डारिक एसिड एग्जाम्पल इज म्यूसिक एसिड एंड यूरोनिक एसिड इट इज डिराइव फ्रॉम ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ प्राइमरी अल्कोहल ग्रुप the glucuronic acid hydronic acid these are the constituents of glycosamino glycans which are the heteropolysaccharides and udp glucuronic acid it is used to conjugate bilirubin the second reaction of monosaccharide is alcohol formation by reduction and there is formation of various types of alcohols like sorbitol is formed from glucose and fructose Mannitol is formed from fructose and mannose, and galactose is reduced to form galactitol or delcitol. And the clinical significance of this alcohol formation is the formation of sorbitol from excessive glucose in diabetes mellitus is one of the important causes of cataract formation in the eyes, and it is also one of the factors for micro angiopathy leading to. neuropathy or nephropathy in diabetes mellitus and this mannitol is osmotic diuretic and it is used in the iv infusion medicine to decrease intracranial pressure amino sugars are also formed from monosaccharides what are these amino sugars when one or more hydroxyl group of monosaccharides are replaced by amino groups these amino sugars are formed for example glucosamine galactosamine and these amino sugars are used in the synthesis of glycosaminoglycans like heparin chondroitin sulfate and these amino sugars may be acetylated for example n acetyl glucosamine n acetyl galactosamine and these are required for glycoprotein synthesis ester formation is also one of the important reaction of monosaccharides phosphate esters so this phosphate esters are formed by reaction of phosphoric acid with one or more hydroxyl group of sugar and the examples of phosphate esters are glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate and this glucose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate these are the intermediates of glycolysis deoxy sugars are the important derivative of monosaccharides and deoxy sugars are formed by removal of oxygen from a hydroxyl group of monosaccharides so deoxy sugars they lack oxygen atom here at the carbon atom number 2 and this 2 deoxy ribose is a sugar component of deoxy ribonucleotides which are present in dna the other example is 6 deoxy 6 galactose or it is also called as l fructose and it is a component of glycoproteins blood group substances and bacterial polysaccharides glycosides are also important derivatives of monosaccharides and they are formed by condensation of the hydroxyl group of anomeric carbon atom of one monosaccharides with hydroxyl or amino group of another molecule and this another molecule can be either carbohydrate or it can be non carbohydrate so some glycosides contain only carbohydrates and some glycosides contain non carbohydrate moiety along with the carbohydrate so that non carbohydrate moiety is also called as a glycon and the glycosides which contain only carbohydrate they form disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides and the bonds by which all these disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides are formed they are called as glycosidic bonds and the examples of glycosides containing non carbohydrates are purin nucleotide like adenosine guanine pyrimidine nucleosides like cytidine uridine 
and various steroid glycosides like digoxin, aubin, fluorescein, etc. Now let's see how the naming of glycosidic bond is done. So various glycosides containing carbohydrates are disaccharide, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. So this naming of glycosidic bond depends on the linkage between carbon atoms and status of anomeric carbon. For example, this is the structure of maltose and maltose is a disaccharide which is formed by alpha D glucose and other alpha D glucose condensation. So there is condensation of two alpha D glucose and here the bond which is formed is alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond because this is carbon number 1 of 1 alpha D glucose which forms glycosidic bond with the fourth carbon of other molecule of alpha D glucose and that's why it is alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. This is the structure of lactose which is formed by beta galactose and one molecule of beta glucose and the bond is formed between carbon number 1 of galactose and carbon number 4 of glucose. So it is beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. This is the structure of sucrose. Sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose and the glucose is alpha D glucose and fructose is beta D fructose and the glycosidic bond is formed between carbon 1 of glucose and carbon 2 of fructose. So the bond is alpha 1 to glycosidic bond. What is the therapeutic importance of glycosides? For example, cardiac glycosides. Digoxin is a cardiac glycoside and it inhibits sodium potassium ATPase pump and enhances the cardiac contractility and delays AV conduction. And this drug is used in heart failure and also used in cardiac insufficiency. Vorbent is a drug. It is a sodium potassium inhibitor in cardiac muscle. Streptomycin is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Fluorescein blocks transport of sugar across intestinal and renal epithelium. Doxorubicin is an anti-cancer drug and donorubicin is also an anti-cancer drug. It is used to treat leukemia.